But why some say the most, some say the most, why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. One we are unwilling to postpone. And one we intend to win. Hello, friends. Another week is in the books. My name is Matthew Harris, and this uh, is Mind Palace. So here's your weekly in-depth life hack. In this particular episode, we'll be talking about how writing is a superpower, only one of many that you can develop for yourself. So in defense of writing, because with the advent of ChatGPT and other language learning models, we may soon be outsourcing basic forms of writing the same way we've been outsourcing math to calculators for years. And while there's a strong case for using and exploiting text-based generative AI to its fullest potential, we would be remiss not to recognize the negative latent functions associated with doing so. The number one sought-after soft skill that any employer looks for is effective communication. Employers seek candidates who convey information clearly, listen actively, and express themselves in a professional manner. And if you are an employee, you know there's nothing more frustrating than a blustering boss who continues to an endless cavalcade of vague promises, or a CEO who is unable to articulate his vision for the future of the company and why you should care. Strong communication skills encompass verbal, written, and nonverbal communication, allowing individuals to interact with colleagues, clients, and stakeholders effectively. And we pretend, as a culture, that effective communication is simply something you learn as you grow up. But techniques like mirroring, active listening, and persuasive writing are all skills that have to be learned, practiced, and honed. In a single piece of prose, whether fiction, an essay, a blog, or an email to a colleague, You have to be aware of tone, diction, like word choice, and syntax, which is the length of your sentences. And that doesn't even include more advanced techniques like alliteration, allusion, assonance, sibilance, simile, and metaphor. We can always have a chatbot write the bare bones of what we need and then edit it. But we miss out on the opportunity to craft something of value and hone our skills in the process. If you are writing a social media post, like a bullshit busy work assignment for school or a perfunctory email, then there's really no harm in using GPT and learning a bit of prompt engineering because that's something that we're all going to have to need to learn and use in the near future. But it's likely that any learning it's likely that any language learning model will fall short of your expectations and its subtext and emotional impact will ring hollow when it really counts. Like trying to write a best man speech for a beloved sibling, a eulogy for a parent or guardian, a cover letter for a dream job, a letter of intent to the seller of that perfect house, or an email to an irate client when you can't afford to lose when they won't pick up the phone. Ayn Rand defines good writing in her book, The Art of Fiction, as being able to turn your abstractions into concretes. That's really what you're doing when you write. You have a message you want to convey, an idea you want to explore with others, or an image in your head you'd like to share. And when you first try and ground that abstraction into reality, we often become disillusioned by the preliminary results. Your first pass at a painting, or just a few pages of that novel that you really want to write, will feel so off the mark that it can be tempting to just throw up your hands, give up, and turn over all your aspirations to your favorite LLM to do the job for you. But until we perfect flash cloning organs or gene splicing to repair DNA, writing is one of the only ways we'll have the prospect of living well beyond our allotted years. People still read books written by people hundreds, perhaps thousands of years ago. The author's physical life ended long ago, but their mental life remains alive and meaningful, even today. All that being said, I do recognize the appeal, and it's no secret that AI will replace much of the menial mental work that people are forced to do every day. As Reid Hoffman, co-founder of LinkedIn and co-founder of Inflection AI, the new AI company, says, If the steam engine was super optimization for our muscles, then AI is super optimization for our brains. 
So if it is 70 and sunny and your least favorite teacher or petulant boss just gave you a busy work assignment that any idiot could do, then I have no issue employing the use of AI to satisfy their petty demands. But you'll find that any sort of AI falls short when it really counts, at least right now. So invest in yourself and never stop learning, growing, or iterating. Because while AI can mimic our heroes, it can't produce anything of true value just yet. And that's where you come in.